We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 11, and uh, we're going to look at that. faith and action. Now, throughout the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, there are characters in the Bible, there are people in the Bible who put their faith in God to get them through things. How many of us have done that in our life? How many of us, yeah, I see a few hands. How many of us have had to put our faith in God to get us through things in life? I know that I'm still doing that, and I'll continue to do that. But we're going to look at characters in the Bible that you might be familiar with, that you might have heard about one time or another, that had to put their faith in God, their faith in action. I want to start reading here verse 1, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is confident of what we hope for and assurance about we do not see. This is what the ancient word commanded for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. So we put our faith in God, right? Sometimes we don't see things that are happening around us. We don't know. But by faith, we put our faith in God to know that he's going to get us through things in our life right? That's what we do. That's our purpose of who we are as followers of Jesus Christ and our put our faith in God. And sometimes we may not be able to see God, but we feel his presence. Amen. We feel his presence. How many of us have gone through situations in our life where we can't see, but we can feel it. We can feel something happening. We can feel something take place in our life. We can feel a healing. We can feel a, a financial burden being lifted off of us. We can feel a relationship with our loved ones being mended. We can feel things because we stepped out in faith of God to take care of that need. And so we find in Hebrews here, we're referring back to the book of Genesis. In the beginning of time, God created the heavens and the earth. It was formed by God. So that we were seeing what was not made out, but what was visible. Visible. We know that God made the heavens and the earth. Why? Because the book of Genesis talks about that. We live by faith knowing that what we have read in the scriptures has been revealed by God's glory. Has been revealed by God's presence. So right out of the gate here, this scripture verse is talking about going back to Genesis. Now we're in the New Testament now, in the book of Hebrews, referring back to Genesis about the creation of time about the creation of time. Let's continue here. Verse 5. By faith, and you're going to have a lot of that in this chapter, by faith, by faith. I tell you what, here's your homework for this morning. Okay? It's not, it's not a hard homework assignment, but your homework is to count in verse 11 how many times by faith is used. Chapter, yeah. Chapter 11. Thank you, honey. Chapter 11, you count how many times by faith is used, Okay? And let me know after the service. All right, here we go. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now, how many of you have come to Jesus by faith? Okay. In other words, by faith, you acknowledge him to be Lord. By faith, you acknowledge him to go to the cross and die for the sins of the world. And by faith, you've acknowledged him to come into your life, to forgive you of your sins, to make you into the man and woman of God he wants you to be. How many of you guys have done that by faith? Just show of hands. All right. And if you haven't, what a wonderful day to be able to accept him as Jesus Christ as Lord in your life by faith. And that's why we are here this morning. By faith. By faith. Verse 6. And when without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards for those who earnestly seek him by faith. Verse 7. By faith. Now, you might remember this character, this guy named Noah, who built the ark, right? By faith, Noah went when he warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, but an ark to save his family. So by faith, he condemned the world 
and because hearers of the right of the righteousness that is keeping with faith. So let's talk about Noah for a second, okay? Here's another character in the Bible who by faith heard from God to build an ark. Why? Because God was going to flood the earth. God was going to flood the earth. A flood waters were going to come and wipe out all of humanity on earth. All right? And the animals too. Everything. Now we've got to remember something. According to the word of God, it hadn't rained yet on the earth. And so this was a tough thing for Noah to believe, right? How can we have waters fall from the sky when we've never seen rain fall from the sky yet? So by faith, Noah was obedient to God. He built this giant boat. And him and his family were the only ones that were saved. Because what happened? What, what happens sometimes in our life when, when people see that we come to know Jesus Christ by faith? They laugh at us. Like, hey, what's wrong, what's wrong with you, man? Why are you trying to follow me in a God that doesn't exist? Why are you trying to follow a God that is not even out there? Well, that's what people were doing to Noah. Hey, what's wrong with you, man? Why are you building this giant boat when it has, it's never rained before? And, and, and no God's going to flood the earth. That's what people were thinking. That's why people were laughing at Noah. See, here's the thing. When you come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you live by faith following Jesus Christ, people in this world ain't going to take that so well. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to make fun of you. But you have had things in your life, evidence of things that have taken place in your life to know that God is real. Amen? To know that God is real. All right? You're a perfect example of that. You and I are a perfect example of that because God has brought us here, here this morning to worship him. So Noah was obedient and built the boat. And only him and his family were saved in that flood. Let's continue here. Verse 8. Here's another character you might remember in the Bible. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would later receive his inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, verse 9, by faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger. In a foreign country, he lived in tents. So let's look at the story of Abraham, okay? Abraham's famous for wanting to offer up his son Isaac for a sacrifice, all right? God says, I want you to offer up your son for a sacrifice. What? You want me to sacrifice my son? So by faith, him and his son went on a little journey, all right? And the, the altar was built, according to the scriptures, the altar was built, and Abraham put his son Isaac on the altar and was ready to sacrifice his only son, and God said, stop. You have been obedient to what I've commanded. And God provided a lamb in a bush over here. And that was a sacrifice, the sacrifice of the lamb. So Noah and Abraham, by faith, they stepped out. By faith, they carried out what God wanted them to do. And as a result of that, God blessed them. Let's continue here. By faith, Abraham was obedient to God. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger. In a foreign country, he lived in tents. Let's skip down here to verse 11. And by faith, even Sarah, Abraham's wife, was able to be pregnant with a child. And Sarah was beyond the age of pregnancy. And God blessed them with a child. But by faith, Abraham and Sarah, who were obedient to God, were blessed in this as well with Sarah's pregnancy. Verse 11, and by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was able to bear a child because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. Verse 12, and so from this one man, and he is as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the scene shore. Verse 13, all these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised 
they only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. Verse 14, if you're following along. People who say such things show that they are looking for countries of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, instead they were looking, excuse me, they were longing for a better country and a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. A city for them. God rewards those who are obedient. God rewards those who live by faith. But here's the thing for you and I to remember. It may not happen in an instant. It may not happen right away. It may take years of working. Because sometimes God works in our life. And things need to take time to develop in our life for that to be carried out and completed. But what God wants us to do is stay faithful to him. God wants us to stay obedient to him. God wants us to continue to seek him. Because sometimes in life we get frustrated. And sometimes in life we say, God, why haven't you answered this prayer? Why haven't you healed this person that has been sick that's been in my life? Why can't you meet this financial burden that's been carrying on us for some time? And God said, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you live by faith that I'm going to get you through this challenge in your life? Do you live by faith that by continuing to follow me, I will continue to bless you? To bless you? Tell you a story. So after our, um, our, old, our oldest son, Luke, was born, my wife and I were not able to have any more children. And uh, we were devastated to hear that news from the doctor, to not be able to have any more children. So we prayed about it. We prayed about it. We said, Lord, if it's your will, will you please bless us with more children? If it's your will, Lord, will you please provide more children into our life? And then my wife and I prayed about becoming foster parents. And we did foster care. That, that was a ministry. Taking kids into your home from the foster care system who need to be loved and nurtured. And we brought kids into our home. And we, how many kids do we have total? How, well, first of all, how long were we foster parents? Six years. But in that six years, we had how many kids come through our door? 22. 22 kids came through our door in those six years. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So, but through becoming foster parents, my wife and I were blessed to be able to adopt three children, John and David, and our daughter Maya. Amen? We, we stepped out by faith, about faith. We, we didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah, we took the, 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 the training to become foster parents, and... But it's like we, we trusted God. We live by faith that God was going to get us through this. We live by faith knowing that God had a plan for our life. And as a result of that, he blessed us with more children. So we got five kids and five grandkids. Praise God. Amen. See, we live by faith, family. We live by faith. And we're no different than these characters in the Bible. They had their flaws. They had their issues. They had their doubts. They had their worries. When we read about some of these people, King David's a perfect example. Just read about some of the life that King David lived. I mean, he was, a, he was what do they say, a hot mess? He was a hot mess. I mean, he, he, had, some, he had some stuff, right? But we're, I'm a hot mess. Some, I, got, I got some stuff. We got some stuff that we're going through, yeah. But by faith, we live by the will of God and the word of God to get us through it. All right. By faith, by faith, Moses, when he was growing up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasure of sin. I'm in verse 24 here, by the way. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead 
to his reward. Verse 27. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He preserved because he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the application of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. So there's a couple more stories of people in the Bible living by faith. Moses, And then what happened when he got to the Red Sea? By faith in the work of God, the sea parted, amen? And Pharaoh and his army drowned after Moses and his, and his descendants walked safely through the floodgates. So we're going to close our time together this morning. And the question for you and I this morning is, are we living by faith? Are we living by faith? Or are we trying to hang on to things that we think, well, God, I just don't know if you can take over this right now because I, I just need complete control over it. Yeah. Or are we releasing it and saying, by faith, God, I give this over to you and I let you handle this and I let you take care of this. By faith, I'm trusting in you.